a new me, 1109. <laughs> so for those of you who are maybe newly subscribed to my channel, um, I want it to be a new me on 1109. So November 09 um, is the actual day that I had surgery in the year 09. So that's the reason why I'm 1109. Let me just go ahead and give you some um, background for those of you who don't necessarily know me really well, but maybe you've tuned into my channel here recently. Um, here's my story, and some of you um, might have been on this journey with me, and I don't think that I've necessarily completely articulated this before, um, but, but one of my primary um, pieces of advice that I give anybody who is exploring weight loss surgery is to make sure that you take your time, make sure that you educate yourself, understand as much as you can about whatever procedure you are selecting for yourself before you actually have surgery. So let me tell you what I did. Um, it was around November 2007 when I went to my primary care physician I had before this gone to latband.com because of many, many commercials that I saw. Um, I went to latband.com, signed up for a seminar in my area, went to two seminars, learned about latband, felt the latband, um, saw people who had had surgery and, you know, they have their before pictures and, and now seeing them in their after. Um, I did all of that before I even approached my primary care physician. So I approached him around uh, the beginning of November 2009. And when I went there, I talked about the fact that I wanted to have weight loss surgery. Um, just was concerned about some stuff. My mom had been really sick and she had um, heart failure and um, subsequently passed away as a result of that. And I did not want to be in a place where I could not live a healthy life um, for my children and be around with my children. And I didn't want my children to have to bury me early like I did um, with my mom. And so I was worried about that. I didn't necessarily have weight loss surgery for any vanity reasons. I was concerned about my health. I didn't want to end up with comorbidities. I didn't have any. So I didn't have sleep apnea. I didn't have high blood pressure, um, diabetes, any of those things. But I did not want to be in a place where I would ultimately have those things. And so went, had a conversation with my primary care physician. While we were talking, he turned around and he was actually typing. And I didn't realize that he was typing and sending over the referral for me um, to the bariatric program. And so um, I have Kaiser, I'm in Northern California in the Sacramento area. And um, for those of us who are over here, they do not necessarily perform, well back then, I don't know if things have changed recently, but back then they did not perform, perform any weight loss surgeries in this area. All of that was done in the hospital in South San Francisco. And so I set out on this journey December 2007, um, going back and forth, doing classes, doing psyche valves, meeting with um, dietitians, surgeon, um, medical, director of, of the medical program in bariatrics, all of that. And I went through this whole process until I actually met with my surgeon. And that was, I want to say, August 2008. So August 2008, I got a goal weight and I needed to lose 15 pounds. Well, I know how to lose 15 pounds. I knew how to lose 15 pounds, um, but I didn't initially. <laughs> In fact, I did not get to the point where I actually lost 12 pounds and got a surgery date until a whole year later. Why? Um, it wasn't because I couldn't lose the 12 pounds or the 15 pounds. It was because once I had actually gotten to the point where I was accepted into the bariatric program, I met with a surgeon. I had a real surgeon. The person that I met with in August 2008 was going to be the person who was actually going to perform my weight loss surgery. Um, some fear set in because it was sort of like the reality of it is 
it, it, it's all here <laughs> and it's time. And the reality is once I do this, my life will never be the same. Um, and, and I struggled with it for months and months and months. And then finally one day the bestie said, do you think it's fear? <laughs> and it was sort of like, ding, 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 yes. Um, because I had to accept this reality. So the number one piece of advice I'll, I'll always share with people who are considering weight loss surgery is that you take the time out to do the work mentally and to process through get yourself ready for the reality that your life will not be the same. Um, I see people, and I can, I can really sit back and say, I, I see a lot of people within the community who might go to the doctor and get a surgery date that's like two weeks away um, and then have surgery and struggle. Um, struggle either because they didn't get the education ahead of time they didn't fully understand what this really meant, um, or they didn't necessarily have time to do the head work and to process through the reality of the fact that if we are emotional eaters, we got to sort of try to figure out how we're going to redirect that energy when stress hits, because stress is going to hit. <laughs> Um, it's not going to be we have weight loss surgery, we lose 100 pounds, and then we're never going to be in a stressful situation ever again in our lives. It will happen. Um, and so that year, I really took some time out to think about what food meant to me. Food had always been my friend from a little girl. I remember um, being in you know tense situations and getting a fried drumstick from the refrigerator and sitting in the corner under the dining room table. And my mom would be walking around the house going, Mina, Mina, where are you? And I was with my friend, food, um, underneath the table comforting myself. And so all of my life from, this was even before kindergarten, um, food had been my comfort, it had been my friend. So I needed to figure out what, what was I going to do when I could no longer do that after I had surgery. Um, and so yes, I started off my journey in technically December of 2007. And I did not have surgery until November 2009. Um, and so for those of you who didn't know that part of my story, there you go. <laughs> um, I often say I'm, I'm a recovering emotional eater. And, um, and, you know, I'll share something else with you that became very, very clear to me last week. I was in the middle of um, a very high stress work professional situation that I'd never been in before. Um, and I found myself, I said, um, on Facebook, I think yesterday that I was so glad that food is now again and significant to me because last week I found myself going on sort of little mini binge type situations. And when I say binge, and after I said that, not too many people liked it, <laughs> I don't think too many people knew what to do with it. Um, most of the things that I say are positive and uplifting and, you know, uh, together. And um, But the fact of the matter is I'm human. I didn't get to be 288 pounds because I had it all together in my head. Um, and so I hit bumps in the road too, just like a lot of us. But... I was sitting back and I was trying to figure out what is that mini binge thing that I was talking about. And for me, anything that I should not be eating and I eat in excess is too much. And so um, the primary thing that I was eating was sunflower seeds. Now, some people might say, oh my gosh, she's talking about sunflower seeds. Or, oh my gosh, she's talking about eating you know, too many plums or bananas or whatever. Well... If my rules are I eat three meals a day, no snacking and no grazing, um, whatever it is that I that I indulge in and run to when I'm in a stressful situation is wrong for me. <laughs> um, so no, I wasn't eating packs of Twinkies or anything like that. 
I did make a peach cobbler and have some had some Briar's ice cream at some point. Um, had a couple servings of that, and so and, and didn't eat dinner. I mean, so remember, I'm a lap bander. I don't dump, and so I can eat sugar. I can't eat too much cake, but I can eat cookies and and stuff like that. Um, I even had like some popcorn or something at, at some point. But back to the point. The point is. Whenever I go outside of my yes food list, I have a yes list, what I can't eat in a no list, of what I should stay away from, whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, whenever I get into an area where I'm grazing and I'm eating too much, for me, uh, that's wrong. But let, let me tell you uh, what I learned in all of this. What I learned in all of this is uh, this whole journey for me has been mind over matter um, because I realized that I can eat more than a cup of food if I really wanted to. You know, people have said to me and send, send notes and stuff like that from time to time, you know, when I was in the beginning phases where I would show you guys that I ate a half a cup of food three times a day. And people would always say, oh my goodness, you had a half cup of food. How do you eat a half cup of food and survive? I would never be able to eat a half cup of food. Well, I ate a half a cup of food because they told me to eat a half a cup of food. And at some point, they told me to eat more. And so typically now, a three-fourths cup is good for me. Um, but I might put a cup of food on my plate. Um, the key for me is starting off with an amount. And knowing that I shouldn't be going back and getting seconds and thirds and fourths and fifths. I should stay within the amount that I'm told to eat. Now, mind over matter. Mind over matter has been the key because I now understand why people will say to me, I ate three cups of pasta. And I don't understand why I ate three cups of pasta because I could eat three cups of pasta and I have a lap band and I ate it. Now I get it. I get the fact that if I wanted to, I could sit down and probably eat three cups of pasta. I was told not to eat rice. I was told not to eat pasta. I was told not to eat doughy breads. And so I don't mess with it. I don't play around with it. Um, mind over matter, right? It's not to say that I could not eat those things and I could not eat in excess of a cup of food if I tried to. <laughs> I now realize that it's mind over matter. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I just sort of want to leave that with you that um, our mind is really willpower. Matter is really food. So are we exhibiting or exerting enough willpower over the amount, the portion, the type, the time, all of that, um, that we're eating food. So mind, again, is the willpower, your willpower that you have over that matter, which is food. Um, so I just, I just want to leave that with you guys. Um, I, I, I'm 23 months in, realize now, and I get it. I get why people say from the very beginning, but, but see, if you start off from the very beginning, um, trying to figure out how much food you can eat, trying to figure out, you know, what the limits are for you and not staying within the guidelines that were given to you, then it's hard to then correct it at some point, you know, a year down the line or two years down the line and start, you know, sort of want to go cold turkey and eat a half a cup of food or a cup of food. Um, but if you come out the gate following the rules, I didn't know. I came out the gate eating a half a cup of food. And then I would say to myself, okay, I was told eat a half a cup of food. And when this half a cup of food is done, I'm done. Um, <laughs> I didn't necessarily really sit back and try to figure out whether or not I was full. I just sort of went with, this is what they told me to eat. And so this is what I'm going to eat. Um, and and I, I, I kept it at that. So, you know, here I am 23 months later. Um, highest weight, 288 pounds. Um, last time I got on the scale, I was still hitting at, uh, I think it was, last time I tried, it was maybe 158, um, 156. I haven't weighed. 
Um, perhaps I will. I'm going to upload this video straight from my iPad so I won't be able to show you a picture. Um, but I'll put it in the description exactly how much I weigh. I'm not a slave to the scale. I don't get on it all the time. I don't get on it every day. I don't get on it every week. Um, <laughs> when I start feeling heavy, I will get on it and I will, uh, you know, put some new processes in place to get back to where I need to be. But right now, I'm, I'm pretty good. And so um, I'm going to go with uh, 23 months later, still 130 pounds plus down, whatever that plus is. Um, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Mind over matter. Just remember that. Um, you have the power and the control to limit what, how, when, how much you're eating. Just make sure that you exercise that. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.